Hello everyone, and welcome to a miscellaneous episode of Game Sweet Zone, where anything goes. As you can infer by the title alone, we're going to try something different. Since we've covered 4 pieces of video game music, 1 theme pattern, and 2 techniques, let's try using everything in our arsenal to have some fun. Winner wins, loser dies. Join at your own risk. But really, composing your own music can be fun, especially if trying it for the first time. I'd recommend it. Oh, <laughs> well obviously, I mean it is a challenge and that's the point of the video. The challenge is to simply create your own music, something that you can call your own. I'd say there are two main ways you can tackle this, general or catered. You can compose a general game theme, or you can find a game you're interested in and make something that you think suits a certain level. The latter can be especially helpful, because if you are making a piece for a game's level, matching the feel of the level and game is important, but both options are totally fine. It can be daunting if it's your first one. I can't even remember the last time I created a piece in music software, so this sounds a bit intimidating. No worries, this video provides more advice, on top of what we've already talked about. In addition, what better way is there to give advice than looking at some poor Saps music? That's right folks, we're going to make an example out of the first composition someone on the internet has ever made. You'll learn everything not to do, and what may have turned out well. Give me the link, Jerry. Oh, that's mine. Okay, okay, fine. <sighs> We will just use my first piece as an example of a good-hearted attempt at raising a fully grown composition, but the unnoticed abuse we gave it crippled its existence. It's for educational purposes. Can't be that cringeworthy. There is absolutely zero regard for volume. Zero. It's really bad. If you've watched some episodes of Game Sweet Zone, then you've probably heard me say, keep the volume under zero dB, you don't want distortion. I'm going to give you a perfect example of what I mean. Once again, it goes over zero decibels a lot, so it's going to be loud. There's your warning for headphones and speaker volumes. Keeping things under zero dB is important for general listening pleasure and no distortion. If you ever go this far over zero and never fix it, I will angrily sidestep towards you and give you dwarfism. As a general rule, try to keep things under zero dB, but also don't forget to try and keep things loud enough. This piece looks like it has absolutely no idea where it's going. Even the instrument patterns are slowly going downhill. Sounds like early adulthood. <laughs> anyway, the intro has no consistency or direction. It doesn't seem to be based on any musical idea whatsoever, but rather a string of notes I placed just to make it to the next part. Here's an example. Let's compare the original intro to a new one I'm about to create. I guess I'll just do it in the same style. Might as well keep it consistent. Do they both still sound terrible? Yeah. Does one have more structure? Arguably so. If you showed me these two intros for the first time, one of these would sound like there was some sort of thought process that went into it. The first one's just trying to have something that leads to the rest of the music. It also dwindles on for quite a while, but that might not matter much to other listeners. This next part can be considered a part of the intro, but I just see it as more of a transition after the intro. Using the same patterns and similar notes eases the music into the main parts, which is a good thing, but it takes quite a while still. 
The main part's okay and somewhat solid, but the ending seems to suffer the same issues as the intro a little bit. The transition between the main part and ending here is pretty lacking. In general, I like to have an idea of what I'd like to do before actually doing it. Additionally, make sure things sound natural to you, as if everything there belongs where they are. Here, it feels like I just wanted to get to the end as soon as possible, and that some things don't actually belong where they are. However, don't limit yourself to common structures, but at the same time, it helps to know them. That way, you're not totally left in the dark. Here's what I recommend you keep in mind. Video game music, and music in general, typically have these sections. Percussion, Bass, Rhythm, and Lead. As for structure, mainly keep these in mind. Intro, main part, transition, and end. Listen to stuff like Green Hill Zone or pretty much any of your favorite video game music and try to label the different parts. You'll understand it better that way. Some don't even have intros and go straight into the main part, like the music that's playing right now. Don't worry about structure way too much, but at the same time, worry enough about it so that it doesn't end up like this. I apparently used a combination of a square wave, triangle wave, and rounded saw wave. Using it itself isn't a terrible idea, but it was implemented in a contrasting manner. Just about every instrument except for this one uses reverb, which is simply an effect that gives the sound some depth in order to make it sound like it's being played in different environments. Without reverb, this sounds dry and pretty out of place. The main melody sound, I would say, also gets old. It hardly ever changes. So, change things. I mainly use preset instruments, so I never tinkered much with effects. However, there's way too much reverb on all of the instruments. This leaves a lot of lingering sound at the end of notes. Here's an example. Listen to my voice. That's way too much reverb, right? Well, you're wrong. I didn't use any yet. This is too much reverb. Reverb can help things sound much more natural and less dry, but be careful not to overuse it. If you check some of my older works, I seem to overuse reverb a lot, from what I remember. A lot of reverb can work in some cases, but not too often from my experiences. It's all up to you in the end, so. The frequency spectrum seems occupied at every living moment. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but from my perspective, some notes sound way too cluttered when in the same range, and that's on top of all of the reverb that's here. Just be observant of where your instruments lie in the frequency spectrum if you can. At some point, I had two instrument channels play the same notes, thus giving us a different sound to work with. This is a good thing. Layering lets you experiment with different sounds to help find what you're looking for, or maybe something you never knew you wanted. Try it out. Please. <laughs> I COMMAND YOU! I didn't know anything about key signatures, the names of notes, or even something as simple as having to keep the volume under 0dB when I started out. With that being said, I went pretty crazy with whatever notes I used. Somehow, this works as a lesson for me today. Don't be afraid to leave the music's key signature for a while. Except at night, unless you live life on the edge. Keys are basically very compatible notes that the music likes to sit in. Basically, it's a composition's home, but it never hurts to leave it. I had a somewhat long explanation about key signatures, but after some thought, it's not as practical as this advice. The most important thing you should remember is that if it sounds good, it's fine. Always remember that. Okay, that's about all I can teach you from this. Torture session's over. I also hope that this example is a demonstration that you don't have to be super awesome or knowledgeable at music to make a decent first try. I bet there were a ton of other things I never knew when I first started, yet I still tried anyway. I didn't even totally understand how to use the software, that just takes some getting used to. 
you generally learn over time, but no matter the pace, you'd be surprised by how far you can go, even when you don't know much about what you're doing. Once again, the challenge is to simply create a piece you can call your own, whether it's by itself or to substitute an existing level's theme. We've completed a good number of episodes that you can learn from if you need more assistance, and of course, I'm still here. I'm not an expert, but I'm still here. I will also start the challenge as soon as this is uploaded, and fully explain the creation process in a follow-up miscellaneous video, so you're not alone. I encourage you to give it a shot. Try whatever theme you want. Boss battle, first level, title screen, save room, anything. It's also not necessary, but I'd personally love to see what everyone's come up with if they'd like to share them. As a reminder, some software you can use include stuff like FL Studio 12, Famitracker, Reaper, Mario Paint Composer, GarageBand if you have a Mac, and even your own instrument. You can also download VSTs, Virtual Studio Technology, and sound fonts to broaden your sound inventory, which are compatible with software like FL Studio and Reaper. I'll have some in the description, but also be wary of where you get them from. Try not to be intimidated if some of the software looks complicated or tricky. It actually just takes some getting used to. I use FL Studio and have stuck with it simply because I'm very familiar with it and like its workflow, so experiment a bit to see what you like. Mario Paint Composer and Famitracker can be pretty decent starts, especially for retro music. Anyway, thanks for watching. Jerry and I will see you in a week or so with our results. After that, then we'll get started with the next set of cover episodes. Awesome.